As the youngest of the four horsemen and protagonist of the first Darksiders game, War is a complete softy. Nah, I'm just kidding. This guy is an absolute monster of the battlefield and is the physical embodiment of violent conflict and slaughter. Wielding his greatsword Chaos Eater and galloping into battle on his trusted steed Ruin, War is willing to crush and tear apart the forces of Hell and Heaven to maintain the balance and help his fellow horsemen. But this character has a lot more to him than just his skills with the sword and his stoic attitude. The history and mythology behind war tells us about the union of demons and angels, and the ancient writings that foretell the end of days. So ready your horses, sharpen your blades, because this is war. First off, for this exploration, we'll be weaving back and forth between the games as the first three Darksiders take place around the same time. So. I'll do my best to keep things in order when I discuss different story beats. As well, spoilers ahead and viewer discretion as we'll be seeing a lot of blood. Let's talk about War himself and who he is first. War is the youngest among his siblings and is presumably one of the strongest of the four horsemen. Wielding a greatsword that is nearly bigger than him, War is determined to cause utter decimation to any who get in his way. And speaking of decimation, War has the ability to transform into a demon of chaos. Growing nearly triple in size, his whole body blazes with chaotic hellfire. And in this form, War is completely invulnerable and can take out any enemy with absolute ease. We'll be going over that in just a little bit. Within War's history, he's an extremely ancient being. It's unclear just how old the Horseman is, but for reference, War and his siblings were born soon after the creation of angels and demons. It's revealed in Darksiders 2 that War and the other Horsemen are beings known as Nephilim an extremely powerful race that was formed from the union of both angel and demon. The first of this race, I should add, was a Goliath known as Absalom, who was crafted by the demoness Lilith from the primordial dust of both angel and demon. I'll be touching on Absalom in just a minute, but the Nephilim are actually our first stop on our mythological journey and exploration of war and the Darksiders universe. As I had mentioned before, the Nephilim are believed to be the culmination of the union between angel and demon, possessing incredible strength, incredible intelligence, and strong stature. And over the past few years, the trope of Nephilim has been a typical lore choice for characters seen in games like DMC and even Diablo. Currently, the origins of this race are debated between several different thoughts and strong interpretations. In one thought, it's believed that these beings were the men and women born after the time of Adam and Eve and before the construction of Noah's Ark, as cited in Genesis chapter 6, line 4 of the Hebrew Bible. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. On top of the Nephilim being referred to by name, they were also referred to as the Anakim, or the descendants of a great warrior in the time before Noah, Anak. In this they're described as giants and the mightiest of men, as the Old Testament was believed to be written around the 7th century BCE, and this interpretation might have some relation to even the giants of Greek myth, as this belief revolved around the same time. These giants of Greek myth were beings of incredible strength that rivaled even that of the gods. 
Even their birth bears some resemblance as they were born from the primordial blood of Gaia and Uranus, thanks to the titan Kronos. In a differing interpretation of the Nephilim, they were formed from Sumerian myth as the sons of the god of water and wisdom, Enki. Known as the Apkalu, they've been described as seven separate demigods, who held the greatest wisdom of all alongside immense strength. It's heavily mentioned throughout Sumerian belief that the Abkalu were the seven sages who aided in multiple facets of their time, with some cuneiform texts stating that the sages helped build temples in the cities of Uruk, Kesh, and Ur. As well, many of these sages have been found to be associated with kings throughout Sumerian rule, being named with a differing king either as a counselor of sorts or perhaps as an epithet to the king. I should mention as well that these sages were often depicted as hybrid beings, comprised of a human body and the head of a fish or even a bird, as this hybridization between man and animal has been seen throughout history as a proof or connection of divine power. One final interpretation that has become one of the most common, and one that has evolved into what we now see as the union of angel and demon, was the belief that the Nephilim and their concept originated from the literature of Enoch around the 3rd century BCE, as within these texts, it's depicted that many of the angels rebelled against God's word and fell to earth in their desire to consummate with the daughters of man. As stated in the first book of Enochic literature, The Watchers, the angels, led by Samyaza, swore an oath to one another atop Mount Hermon to uphold their ordeal in attaining wives among the daughters of men, acknowledging their sin against God. These angels themselves and their children, from the wives that they had claimed, were considered the Nephilim as they were beings from divine origin. Either way you slice or dice it, the Nephilim's origin typically sees the union of a divine race or power and more material aspect of the Earth. For Darksiders, the first Nephilim created, Absalom, was the commander of the warrior race that utilized the power of war and his siblings in their conquest for supremacy across the universe. But seeing just how powerful and destructive their brothers and sisters were, War and his three siblings split from their race and joined with the Charred Council, a neutral faction that sought to end the fighting permanently. In this, War was given immense power and immense capability. This formed him into an aspect of violence, giving him the name and the title of the Horseman of war. After this, the four horsemen rose against the brethren and slew every last Nephilim, leaving Absalom for last. Here, at the end, War's brother Death claimed the final strike on Absalom, ridding the universe of the threat of the Nephilim. It's worth mentioning that Absalom is another biblical figure much like War and the other horsemen. In brief, Absalom was the third son of King David of Jerusalem, and has been described as the most handsome of King David's children and of all of Jerusalem. However, he was a very corrupted man, not unlike Darksiders Absalom, as his hunger for power and violence grew more and more from his anger. After avenging his sister's molestation, he slew his brother Amnon for committing this act and roused an uprising to lead Israel to new prosperity as their new bloodthirsty ruler. This forced his father, King David, to flee and during his time as ruler, Absalom forced himself on women publicly and executed any who opposed him. In his final days, Absalom's forces would fight against King David's forces in 
And in the Battle of Ephraim's Wood, Absalom would die at the hands of King David's soldiers. For war, the death of his brethren, the Nephilim, was extremely taxing on his mind, and thus he became more stoic and silent, focusing his efforts on his mission under the hand of the Charred Council. This strain of trauma is seen in Darksiders Genesis, as war and his brother's strife are taunted by the fallen angel Astarte, leading to both war and Astarte losing their head. Though, Astarte wouldn't be getting back up from losing theirs. This sort of violence and short temperament that war so often reveals shares a connection with a particular god of war that reveled in the violence of war. Born from Zeus and Hera, Ares, the Greek god of war, was a violent god who showed his bloodthirsty nature as a savage soldier who would just as easily kill and cut down an innocent if it meant subduing or conquering his enemy. In Greece's prehistory, it's believed that some cults worshipped the god of war by presenting blood sacrifices, either by killing prisoners of war or by offering their own blood to honor the god and embodiment of war. It's through this that Ares was, and has been so often, associated with the color red, the same red that the horseman of war so often wears, sharing this connection with the spilled blood in battle. In addition, Ares' brutality plays a part in war's design as his demonic chaos form is absolutely brutal in its usage. In this form, war taps into his inner demon and becomes an avatar of violence. Incapable of taking any damage, war is able to shred through even the toughest enemies, portraying the chaos that battle brings as war's body transforms into a hellfire demon. Utilizing this powerful form will turn any player into a bloodthirsty demon wanting to lay waste to any in their way. This, again, relates back to the god of war, Ares, and his bloodthirsty tendency was the story of how war lost his hand and had it replaced with a gauntlet. Early in the horseman's service to the Charred Council, war had gone to Earth in a rampage, and had completely decimated an ancient army to sate his bloodlust and thrill for a fight. After nearly wiping out the army single-handedly, the other horsemen, his siblings, were sent to rein in their brother. So lost in the heat of battle, war stabbed his brother death with his greatsword Chaos Eater. Thankfully, this didn't actually affect the horsemen of death, and instead, the horsemen used his own body to hold war in place, as the other two horsemen, both Strife and Fury, held war even further, immobilizing him just enough for death to sever War's left arm, finally freeing him from his bloodlust. Soon after, War was given the metal gauntlet in place of his natural arm. Now, for the title of Horseman of War, this is our final aspect and most important piece to not only the story of Darksiders, but to War's origin as well. Thanks to the alliance with the Charred Council, War and his siblings became the Riders of the End, the Riders of the Apocalypse, to fight and end everything there is on Earth. Claiming the souls for both Heaven and Hell, they would only be called when all seven seals were broken, with the final one bringing them to the final battleground. Within biblical belief, the horsemen were the aspects of the final moments that mankind would bear witness to before their brutal end. These four originate from Abrahamic belief and were primarily seen within both the book of Revelation in the New Testament and the book of Ezekiel and Zechariah of the Old Testament. Here in the book of Revelation, 
The four horsemen are brought about when the first four seals are broken by the Lamb of God. The first seal broken revealed a white horse and its rider who sat tall, carrying a bow and arrow with him. This horseman was conquest, and he was meant to represent the armies coming to claim the lands of men. With the second seal broken, this revealed the rider of red, who carried a great sword with him. This rider was War, our protagonist for the first Darksiders game, and is meant to show how men of the earth would claim the lives of one another in civil war. Now with the third seal broken, it revealed the rider of the black horse and was named Famine. This rider carried balances in his hands and showed that all of the earth will starve and wither. Finally, the last seal broken reveals the rider of the pale horse, Death, who carried with him the scythe and brought about Hades, meaning to harvest the lives and the souls of mankind for the afterlife. In comparison, Darksiders has done a very good job in representing these four to their biblical counterparts. And personally, I find it fitting to change both Famine and Conquest to Strife and Fury, respectively, as these aspects not only fit better with the overall world that Darksiders presents, but is also a little bit easier to translate into a gameplay perspective. I also plan on covering each of these horsemen in separate videos later down the line, as each are fascinating in their own right. For War, his biblical counterpart is strikingly similar, and in many translations of the Book of Revelation, the Horseman of War is represented as the god of war in Greek myth, Ares, connecting again to his brutal nature with the god of war. As well, the Horseman of War is meant to show the act of civil war between the people of Earth causing many to slaughter one another for survival. As mentioned before, both books of Ezekiel and Zechariah, the horsemen were all represented with their respective horses, war with red, death with the pale horse, so on, but would be presented with chariots as well. In forming and creating the horsemen of war, it's unsurprising that they are a culmination of multiple different biblical aspects. The creation of the Nephilim from the unholy union of divine and mortal or demonic beings. The belief of the Greek god of war, Ares, showing his brutal nature with his propensity for violence and bloody conflict. Then as well, the bringing of the end for all life on earth, securing the land as the final battleground for heaven and hell to claim their prize. I should mention as well that War himself is seen as an excellent interpretation of the biblical horsemen, and Darksiders' use of Abrahamic myths provides an engaging and deeply complex world to explore. If you're interested in learning more, then I highly recommend playing the games for yourself, or by clicking here, you can learn a little bit more about some myths found in other games. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.